How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of 11 Ball in It. This might be like episode 21, I believe. I think 21. So we, uh, it is Saturday, November 4th. It's 2.30 in the afternoon. We got settled into a nice tree. I've got a, uh, I've got a cornfield to my back. I've got a cornfield to my front. And we're basically in a waterway with a bunch of trees and whatnot. A bunch of scrapes, a bunch of rubs going up each side of this thing. And there's like a communal area where you can see the dead grass where the deer keep walking around at. And there's super heavy trails. And we got a southwest wind, so the wind's blowing up from the bottom. So uh, tonight should be a good night. Should be able to have my buck dead on the ground tonight. Steve said there's a there's a good deer running through here. There's some good deer running through here. I've got a uh, a buck tag and a doe tag ready to go. So if a doe works in, I might the first one that works in, I might let her pass me up to Steve and let him shoot her. And then uh, if another one walks by, another doe walks by, I'm gonna pop her. And then of course if a buck walks by, if it's a good shooter, I'm gonna shoot him. But We're, uh, we're gonna settle in for the evening, and it's gonna be it should be a pretty good hunt. I'll uh, as I'm talking here, I'll probably overlay some video of the area I'm hunting, but it should be a good time. We're out on private ground today again. Tony shot his buck last night. If you watched that episode, uh, it, was, it was pretty intense. If uh, if you missed it, it should be episode 20. And then Steve shot his buck, and that would be episode 19, I believe. So hopefully we have three episodes back to back to back of all of us killing a nice buck. So uh, stay tuned and enjoy the hunt. seen much <clears throat> for deer movement. Well, I actually haven't seen any deer at all, but that's all right. We're starting to hit that, that golden hour or that golden time when the deer are going to start moving. We've had a, it was some kid or whatever, but he's been ripping up and down the gravel road with a four wheeler. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but he's been going for like the last three hours just riding the hell out of that thing. He's been ripping up and down the gravel road to my, my west. And he's south of us just ripping around. But, yeah, whatever. But yeah, been in the stand for two and a half-ish hours and I haven't seen much. I've seen a few squirrels, birds. That's about it, and some pheasants. But, uh, just waiting on these deer to move through. Hopefully, it's soon. Because, uh, I would love to get, if I do end up shooting a buck tonight, I would love to get some daylight photos of them. So, yeah. I'm gonna keep sitting tight. We've got another, about an hour and a half left. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully, something happens. Things can change in the next 60 seconds, so. Never know. Let me sit tight and wait patiently.
So once again, I did not film an outro to this video. So I'm gonna give you guys a little rundown of what happened. And uh, I think I was in the stand for maybe like 20 more minutes after that doe stopped behind that tree. So uh, we had plenty of movement, but uh, the movement really didn't start till right about 5.30ish. That's when the deer started moving in. And I could hear deer off in the corn to my left and to my right because I was situated in a draw in between two cornfields. And what the deer were doing, they were coming down from the north, kind of working through that draw. And b before they got to me, they were splitting off into the cornfield and skirting around the bottom, just, just feeding through the corn. And um, we honestly should have had a lot more deer in there. But I definitely think that kid that was ripping up and down that road, like no joke for like three and a half hours straight, he was just ripping up and down. And at, at one point there were, I think we heard like three or four four wheelers all ripping together going up and down. And he was beating the hell out of that thing. But uh, I think that kind of kind of had to do with us really not seeing the deer, but I also think that corn did. Because as you guys see, as those deer moving through, they really didn't care too much of the four wheelers ripping up and down. But I'm pretty sure if the deer were trying to cross the road and that they were ripping back and forth because uh, the the property directly across the road, we had permission to hunt. And then we had permission to hunt the side that we were on. So the deer crossed back and forth all the time over the road. So I'm pretty sure that four wheeler going up back and forth kind of, most likely affected the deer movement but uh yeah th those last two does you guys saw come in i was going to shoot that lead doe but as you guys saw that tree that she stayed there for like 45 minutes or no like like 30 minutes and she would not go left or right and get in one of my shooting lanes so uh, we did end up hearing more deer uh, as we were coming out and uh it was funny because uh, at the end of the night or at the end of the evening um, I was sitting there and I heard something walking towards me through the cornfield so I'm like what is it? What the hell is that? And then all of a sudden this possum comes out of nowhere comes directly up to the bottom of my tree and uh, I, I went to get down. He stayed there until I was almost down on the ground. <laughs> I was going to grab him put him, up, put him in my pocket and uh, he, he was going to be my new pet but he ended up skir er, scurrying off into the brush. But uh, it was overall a good hunt. I remember that night pretty well because uh, I wasn't wearing my cold weather stuff. And because it was like 50 something degrees to begin with. But as soon as that sun, sun dipped down, it got cold. Like the temp dropped almost like 10 degrees. And I'm sitting there shivering because uh, I didn't have my jacket or my bibs. And uh, it got it got pretty cold. But um, I'm pretty sure the next video you guys will see, we cross state lines into Wisconsin. So hope you guys are excited for that. Thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for watching the Bowhunters Fall and helping me grow my channel. I am absolutely 100% appreciative of all of you who have watched, who are going to watch, who have subscribed, and are going to, subs to subscribe. So uh, if you guys like this video, hit that like button. Uh, if you guys disliked it, hit that dislike button. Let me know down let me know down in the comments why. Uh, I'm trying to improve my editing style, add a little more music, a little more cinematic, if you will. And um, I'm trying to overall improve my craft. So if, if you guys like what I'm doing, you guys like the Bowhunters Fall, and you guys want to see more shenanigans, because we, 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 we filmed uh, a few interesting videos, such as uh, bow hunting certain stuff with, with a recurve. And uh, that video will be coming out soon. But uh, if you guys want to keep up with all that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I appreciate every single one of you. Remember, guys, hunt smart, hunt safe. And I'll see y'all out in the woods.